Hi everyone, um, it's almost Mother's Day and what better way to celebrate than with a classic brunch, which I absolutely love. And the brilliant, brilliant Naomi Hansel is going to talk to us all about brunch and show us how to make delicious eggs benedict. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments box and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, also, tell us about what you do for Mother's Day. What are your traditions? What do you cook? And if you're a mum and you're hoping that your kids will cook for you, then point them to this video on Facebook um, when they get back from school. And also, because um, I'll be to watch it from the start and also I have to tell you if you're looking for a last minute Mother's Day gift there is 15% off textiles and selected glassware on our cookshop until the 26th of March so perfect for those last minute presents and now hopefully if the technology works Naomi will pop up any second now hi hello hello how are you I'm good I'm good it's nice to see you it's very lovely to see you too as ever um and you, I can't wait to see what you do with Eggs Benedict, because I know you always have a really great twist on everything. But first of all, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think the secret of a perfect brunch is? Um, I think something that's relaxed. Um, it's, it's a slightly tricky sort of thing, because most of the things, brunchy-wise, are often kind of made quite quickly. Lots of them are egg-based things that need you feel like you need cooking like instantly straight away, but that's not exactly the vibe for brunch. You start to just relax and just take some things out. But so the oven is nice because you can pop things in the warm oven, you can have some nice warm croissants, you can have some nice homemade bread, you can just defrost things, warm things, make them fresh, keep them warm. Um, that it is quite flexible. And it's quite fun actually, we're gonna cook on the tops today. Um, and that's quite fun. So if you've got friends or family getting together and you want to get everybody involved before they disappear for the rest of the day or whatever they do, it's a nice way to be together. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And I think it's, I don't know, there's something about brunch that just feels like the weekend, it feels really chilled. Is there, there isn't the pressure that if you're going to cook a kind of lunch party or a dinner party, I think it's quite nice. Brilliant. And so now you are going to take us step by step through Eggs Benedict. I am. I am. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is talking about easy stuff is um, if you want your children to produce something delicious for you on Mother's Day morning, just point them in direction of the freezer section of the supermarket and the ready-made croissants. You can just pop them on a tray and cook them. In, in the time it says on the packet, these said 22 minutes, they've had 20, they might get another two more, but they're perfectly fabulous. And they make the whole kitchen smell like a tisserie, they're just heaven. So for me, lying in bed on Mother's Day morning, somebody's maybe brought me a cup of coffee and <clears throat> and then I can smell these coming from downstairs. So I'd be like, oh, hello. So that's a good thing. Um, they are easy to do. We'll just set those down for a moment. So, yes, Eggs Benedict. So, this is the kind of thing people panic about because it's got oh, hollandaise sauce. And why, you know, it's it's kind of tricky. Like, it's, it's maybe medium difficulty instead of, instead of super easy because you have to concentrate for a moment. But, you know, it's really not difficult. And actually, you can kind of just throw it together, just relax and concentrate and do it. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, we're going to do, so you can, as you said, it can be quite stressful trying to do everything, get it ready all together. So we'll do the, we'll do the muffin and the, so Eggs Benedict is a toasted muffin, some nice crispy griddled bacon, some eggs, often a poached egg, but today we're just going to do like fat-free, healthy griddled agar egg. Um, and then it's a hollandaise sauce on the top. So what we're going to do is do the toasted muffin, the bacon and the egg. And we're going to leave those to stay warm for a few minutes in the warming oven while we make the sauce. And then there's no stress around, oh, how do I do them both together? So I'm using my muffins. These are just uh, ready-made toasted muffins. And they're quite, not really funny, but they're quite, they're really good value. They're a whole lot cheaper than buying a, a, a homemade uh, or I know, a beautiful loaf of artisan sourdough bread. So they're really, um, really good value. Muffins, we want uh, bacon, a couple of pieces of nice bacon, and we want some eggs. If you're lucky enough to have hens clucking around the bottom of your garden, oh, my heart goes out to you because I don't have any hens at the moment, but you never know one day soon. So you need some eggs. Um, I always keep my eggs at room temperature because they are their little microclimate. They don't need to go in the fridge. It makes baking a whole lot easier if your eggs are at room temperature anyway. So I've got eggs, and then for the hollandaise, we need an egg. We need a tiny little bit of cider, cider or white wine vinegar. I only have cider in the cupboard, so that will do. And then we need butter, cold butter in cubes. And we need a squeeze of lemon juice and a pinch of salt for the end. So without further ado, over to the aisle. We've got an overhead camera today that Ellie's going to switch on to let you see a good view. And we need a pan. So 
on the Arga today, so I've got an Arga ER3, so I've got two temperature top plates, which means this one is a simmering plate and a boiling plate. It does two jobs. It's got a dial here. It heats up in about five or ten minutes, so you know, if we leave it switched off until we need it and we turn it on. And this is exactly the kind of dish that's fabulous for this cooker because I can do bits on the griddle I want to do and I can use the induction for some of the other bits too. So your hollandaise, well, let's do the muffin and bacon first because that's the easy bit. And then if you decide that actually doing the rest, do the hollandaise sauces too much, it's not too much of a problem. You can just stop at the bacon and egg, argo muffin as we call it. So line the simmering plate with a piece of bacon and glide. It's like this non-stick reusable paper and it's really good. It keeps everything really clean. Pop the muffin on there and that will start to toast. Brilliant. So the next thing we do then is put the bacon on beside it. There we go, just as a bacon. Doesn't really thick or thin, whatever you fancy, streaky or smoked or, or maple cured or whatever you like. And then put the lid down and that's fine. And leave that for a few minutes. Um, I know that some of the older ardors have slightly variable temperatures on the top plates, depending on what else is going on in the oven. So some days it might be warmer than others. So you'll start to see with the bacon, you'll start to see steam coming out the sides of it as well. So we'll leave that there for a moment or two. We can start on our hollandaise actually while that's starting to cook, you can see the steam coming out. Great. Um, you need, I'm gonna cook on my arbor, I've got an induction hob. This is a three series, so it's got the two temperature top plate and the induction hob. I've got the 160 wide version, which gives me a second simmering plate at the far end and a tall fan oven, which is my emergency summer extra capacity oven. So the simmering plate on here, the simmering plates on all the argos, on the, on the, the traditional ones on the seven series, um, whether it's the on all the time version, the R7, or whether it's the um, flexible version, the ER7, they, on the larger version of those, the 150 wise, they all have an induction hob which works in a similar way to this. It's a single zone. But these inductions have got a really, they've got a low temperature function on them as well, so you can use them for really slow, delicate sauces too. So that's where I'm going to start my hollandaise, but I am going to talk about how we do it on the albatross too. That's my bacon. Depending on the bacon will depend on how much juice you get out. We are really lucky. We've got really good local bacon that doesn't have too much extra water pumped into it. But if you buy... So for the hollandaise sauce, you need a pan. So the two pan pans in the Arga world for hollandaise. This is a really good one. This is the small sauce pot. It's got this amazing non-stick lining and we use it for porridge, fruit, sauces, gravy, everything. It's got a... a um, handle that goes in the oven. It's slightly insulated actually as well, so it's good. So we need one egg. We need the egg yolk. I could probably move, as you can see here. So just separate your eggs, start with. This is, if you've got kids, smaller kids or family doing this actually, it's, this is a good skill to learn, even just separate an egg. So separate the yolk from the white, because we only want the yolk for this. Store the whites in a separate little dish keep them in the fridge. They'll last for like several weeks actually kept in the fridge and you can freeze them. And then when you want to make meringues, just make meringues with half, uh, well, with the egg white quantity and then with twice the amount of sugar. So egg yolk, and we want to put that into my pan. Actually, I don't know where you can see it. One egg yolk, lovely. And then a splash of white wine vinegar or cider vinegar, just a little sploosh like that. And then we're just going to stir it quite vigorously. So just use a wooden spoon. This pan needs a non-stick, something non-stick friendly. But I'm going to show you in a minute. The newest Arda pans have this really amazing non-stick on them that you can use a metal spoon or a whisk with. There's my bacon dribbling away. Right, I'm just going to pause for a minute. Not, I haven't turned on the heat yet for my eggs because the important thing with the hollandaise is just do one thing at a time. It's tempting, <laughs> and it's tempting today to think, oh, this is all together. Just do one at a time. So I've got, I'm just whisking up a little bit of my egg yolk and my vinegar, and I want to put a pinch of, a tiny pinch of salt in there. Right, and that's ready to go, but not yet. Let's finish off the muffin. So in case you haven't seen, if you haven't been to an Argadam where we do breakfast all the time, then um, let me just show you this. So here's my toasted muffin and my bacon. So now I want an egg, an arga egg. Crack it on the top of the arga. 
pour it onto the baker guide, close the lid. Brilliant. So the thing is, there's no, I know there's some stuff on there from the bacon actually, but we normally cook that on the bacon guide without any fat or anything at all. It's just a really healthy way, quick and healthy and easy way to have an egg. And actually eggs are such a great source of protein. They've got about six grams of protein each. So actually a couple of eggs in the morning, 12 grams of protein, off you go out the door, set on a great start to your day. So that's going to be good. We'll put that on a plate in a second. Yeah. And then I'll start the hollandaise, but I'm not going to start it until my egg is done. A little bit longer. So the we use the we use the top of the argo like this for lots and lots and lots of different things, whether it's making popcorn, whether it's griddling halloumi, whether it's cooking little pieces of um, chicken, or or even the latest tip I saw from the amazing Penny Zacker, who does lots and lots of Argodems. Um, so Penny got some little meatballs, the ready bone meatballs in the supermarket, and she put them on a simmering plate, and she squashed them with a spatula to make little mini burgers, and then put them inside little mini rolls, thinking that's a genius way to cook. So the tops are brilliant, and if you've got a modern Argo where the tops are separate, separately controlled from the ovens, it means as the weather warms up now, and you might have the ovens on less and have them off completely in the summer, you've still got the tops for all this really, really flexible cooking. So let's get my egg in. Perfect. So this is the best bit, I think. So make sure, because everybody kind of knows what the hot ovens are for. The Nile, often we don't use the, the cooler ones, the warming oven if you have one, or the simmering oven. So we take the plate, and I'm going to put my muffin onto the plate. There we go, I'm going to put the bacon on. Which way around do I think it might be this? So sometimes you see we do the bacon on one side and the egg on the other. Let's do that. Then we want the spatula that I, oh, here we go, I do have it today. Spatula. And then just pick up your egg. If your bacon line is really brand new, you might find that the first time you use it, it sticks. And the secret is to pick it up onto and put it on a separate worktop or a plate or something and you'll find that the um you'll find that the whatever it is comes off easily so just give that a little lift there's my egg fabulous the baby line is good it will go into the sink or the dishwasher for a quick wash or actually here's another magic tip that somebody told me so now that we're out and about and doing real life dems around the country again. Somebody told me this amazing tip the other day. So take your bacon guide, if it's come out of a roasting tin or whatever it is and it's got dirty bits on it, put it in the roasting oven and just let the roasting oven kind of burn off all those bits and they'll just kind of shake off into dust and there's your bacon guide all cleaned. So you learn something every day, don't you? So there's my fat breakfast part one. All that needs now is the hollandaise sauce. It's a bit bright actually, isn't it? Let me show it to you under there. So that's my muffin, egg, runny yolk, really delicious. I'm going to put this into my warming oven, which is here, because I don't need it just yet, I'm going to make the sauce. If you have a warming oven on your Argo, it will be at about 75 or 80 or 90 degrees, and that will be perfect just to keep that egg warm while we make the rest of the sauce. If you don't have a warming oven, but you've got separately controllable ovens, so say you've got a total control or an ER7 or you've got an ER3 like this, if you turn off your simmering oven with the rest of the ovens on, you get enough borrowed heat to make that into a nice warming oven about 70 or 80 degrees. So you can probably find one if you haven't got one already. Right, let's make hollandaise or or long days, as other people often say. So turn on the heat. So two ways of doing this. We can use the heat from the simmering plate. Now it's quite intense for hollandaise. So on my induction bowl. Uh, temperature three is about, no, temperature four is about the same as a simmering plate, but in an ideal world, you want to put this on temperature three. So you just have to be careful. You'll see the eggs start, it'll go from kind of liquid, see through, to start to change colour a bit. What we're going to do is be quite active with this. We're going to move it on and off the heat quite a lot. So give it a little heat. With hollandaise, the trick is you want, you should always be able to hold your hand on the side of the pan. The pan should never get so hot. You can't do that. So take your cubes of butter, there you go, and while the butter's cold, now I know that lots of people will make hollandaise sauce with um, melted butter, but 
But you know, I think with the Argo, this is my tip for the day, because you simmer in plate, it's quite warm for making a holiday sauce. I think it's better if you use a cold butter, because every time you add one, it actually just cools it all down a bit. So the trick is, don't put it on the simmering plate and cook it there. You'll get scrambled eggs if you cook eggs on the simmering plate. It's too hot. You need to cook them below 70 degrees to get them to gently cook without scrambling. So I've got a simmering plate for heating up, but then I've got these resting areas on the side of my ER3, which are just fabulous. It's quite a rugged, slightly different design to a traditional 7 series are it? it's slightly more rugged, which I quite like actually, it means there's less chance of me scratching anything. Now, if you're cooking this on a traditional oven that's got two oven tops and a nice piece of enamel in between that's beautiful and shiny and scratch free, take a piece of um, bake a kitchen roll and put it on the bit in between the two tops and put your pan or the kitchen roll in that bit in the middle because your enamel itself is probably the perfect temperature for making your hollandaise. Um, don't wander off. Don't be tempted to think, oh, I'll make a cup of coffee, this is taking a while. Just chill, just sort of like pause for a minute. And actually, I've only used one egg, so if somebody's making this and having a go and it doesn't quite work, don't panic because it's only an egg and some butter. Um, just throw, don't throw away the ingredients, just keep them, serve them in some mashed potato. They'll be really nice in that. It's eggs and butter after all, isn't it? Or into a fish pie, or it will mix with some, you know, into fish cakes, mix with everything else. So you can see that is just very nicely, it's like the consistency of custard and it's the same sort of colour but that's a nice, perfect looking sort of emulsified kind of sauce. Three, so I've, I've used, okay, so I will do the recipe but let me tell you because I know you'll love it, I know you recipe lovers out there will be thinking I'll follow the recipe. So one egg yolk, a splash of vinegar, side of all white wine vinegar, um, 60 grams of butter, cold butter, cut into eight little cubes. That's a quarter of a packet. That's what's in here so far. And a bit of patience and concentration. Two to go. Yum. I think the thing with this is actually just don't be afraid to have a little practice. Just think, well, I'll just make a little bit. You know, if you have some piece of salmon or something, um, have it in practice. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You don't get right it. If you're making it for lots, I know that traditionally people would put this in a pan. They put the they put a pan of water onto the simmering plate and they put a glass bowl over the pan of water. The idea is the pan of water is not touching the water. The pan, of, sorry, the bowl is not touching the pan of water. It's just using the heat of the steam, because steam never gets hotter than its steam temperature, does it? So that way you keep a really constant temperature, but we don't need to, to be fair. Why wash more things than we need to? A nice non stick now. Perfect. Good, look at that. Lovely. I'm excited about that. So you want to just finish it off with a piece of lemon. A squeeze of lemon juice and a pinch of salt. You'll definitely need a pinch of salt. Even though I've used salted butter, you definitely want a little bit of that. Um, And then don't leave it on the heat. Okay, so if you, if for some reason it's, if it's super runny, it's because it's split. Um, but you'll see that early on. If you carry on cooking that for a bit, if you put it on the serving plate, it will thicken up. You know, you can leave it for a moment, and all of a sudden you'll be able to tell that it's just looking a whole lot more cooked. That's fine. If it goes really thick, just let it down with a little bit of water, just a little bit of cold water. Um, and what's quite nice with that is it will make it go a little bit whiter. So if you're thinking oh, it's a bit yellow looking, it's a bit egg like, a tiny little bit of cold water into an emulsion like this will turn it a little bit lighter in colour. Mayonnaise is the same thing, that's now homemade mayonnaise looks a bit yellow, and Helms looks super white. The more water you add, the whiter it gets to make sure that's how much water there is in some of those manufacturers, particularly the low fat ones, but all the other ones we have so there is my sauce. That is exciting. Now the good thing is, remember, I need this key my up my um, inside of my lid. Those of you thinking, she cooked the bacon in there and the egg and everything, and she's gonna that's gonna get really dirty and how something is so clean. Well, actually, we just wipe them down every time we use them. So before you close the lid, whatever you've been cooking, 
wipe that down and give that a little wipe from the the lid. And that will be fine. If I finish with that, we'll turn it off. We might do something else in a moment. So let me just show you how that all looks together. I'll put a cover on here and I can use it as a serving area. Rescue my plate from my, my warming oven. Got my hollandaise on. It's crying out some black pepper as well, isn't it? This could be a little bit thicker if you want to, but I'm quite happy like this. Over, let's just put it on the middle. Yum. I just want to show you my egg. Now, black pepper we definitely need. Nice grinds. I know the plate looks like it needs something green like some parsley. Oh, we can't see it. Let's move it. But if I put parsley on here, we don't have parsley for breakfast, but it's a pointless garnish, but it will make it pretty. Um, that's all we need. Now, I want to show you, just before Laura comes back in, <laughs> how runny my egg still is. So here is my lovely hollandaise. And something's a strange colour in the camera. Toasted muffin, argar egg, griddled bacon, hollandaise sauce. My breakfast has been kept warm in the warming oven, but the egg is still really, really runny. So that is a perfect combination of actually making it in advance, keeping it warm, having it still freshly, deliciously cooked with a fabulous sauce to go with it. So there we go. That is my Eggs Benedict. Well, as ever, it looks delicious. Um, I think you've got one of your weird green screen things happening. So I know, there's nothing green on the plate, though. What is going on? So strange. It's it's not the out there that can fix my technical issue. Hell, hell. <laughs> You're so clever though, it looks delicious. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, do um, pop them in the comments box and let us know. And meanwhile, I've got a few things that's coming in advance, Nay, for you. Yeah. Um, how do you stop hollandaise sauce from splitting? Um, it's the heat, it's the heat thing. So just be patient, actually, just be, and keep an eye on it so you can tell. If I'd left it on the simmering plate, not really stirred it or had it on there for longer, I had it off on the resting area quite a lot, it would just, it would eventually get too hot and you can tell when it's starting to cook, if it goes really thick. So be quick. Now what you can do is you need to cool it down. You could just put, if you had a bowl of cold water, you could put the bottom of the pan into some cold water or run some cold water in the sink and just put the bottom of the pan into the cold water. That will cool it down really quickly. Or the cubes of the cold butter, because they are cold, you see, then that's, that will cool it down as they go in. If you did it with melted butter, it'll probably happen quicker but it's harder to control the temperature, yeah. So, so splitting is from when it's too warm. Got it. That's perfect. And um, next question is: Can you? Um, is it worth making your own muffins? Well, I didn't really ever think it was actually, but I did make some. So I was like, oh, go on, then I'll make some. So I made some this morning, and I have to say, like, how fun were they, and how cool? So, and we could put some on actually as well if you wanted. We could do that while we're at it. So the so you just make up. It's quite a runny batter. But like runny bread mix, but it's just like a traditional loaf. Um, so some milk and some yeast and some sugar warm together till the yeast kind of goes bubbly. And then mix it into your bread flour. But for 300 mils of milk, it's only 540 grams of flour and an egg, maybe a bit of butter. So it's like an enriched dough. And then you put it somewhere warm to rise. And with bread, you cover it. Um, what we do is we put it either on the simmering plate lid on a cover like that for until it's doubled in size, like half an hour, an hour or so. Or actually on this cooker, I've got storage cupboard above the warming oven. It doesn't have any heat, but it does get warm and the rest of the argar is on. So I use that preview bread super quick. Um, so prove it till it's doubled in size and then just sort of empty it out with a bit of flour, pat it out till it's still quite thick, maybe like four centimeters kind of thick. Cut it into these were like nine centimeter circles. And then I put them on the simmering plate. So they're just being wriggled. So they're like an argar hot bread. So how cool is that for the summer when, when the oven's like in really hot weather, we don't bother turning on the ovens apart from when we need to cook in the evening. So how fun is that? So they come out like this, like two or three minutes either side. And then we'll sp we split them and toast them in the same way as we did. But I've got some others. These other ones that I didn't do from this morning's batch. I'll put those on now. And I did some mini ones. Because if you make your own things, you can do different sizes, can't you? So look at these. These will be like a mini, mini uh, muffin. So let me stick those on and we can natter while they cook. Piece of bacon bite. Again, depending on what temperature you're what's going on with your argo. The new ones hold their temperatures all the time, so they're a bit more reliable. 
Okay. I've, um, well, because it's quite a sticky dough, it's helpful if you use some of that like polenta, semolina like we use for pizzas, just to help them slide off the pizza paddle. So we'll leave those there for a minute and have a look. Okay, great. Um, so at the moment, muffins are great, but I'm really seeing a trend of every time you go out anywhere, people are putting everything on homemade crumpets. What is that about? Uh, I don't know. They're, just, they're a really similar thing, aren't they? They're just, uh, you cook them even cooler. They're cooked on the top. It's a really wet dough. And actually, when you break into a crumpet, you can see it's a very wet, sort of spongy, not very floury kind of dough. Um, People, you can make crumpets with leftover sourdough starch, actually, that's really good fun. You just add some baking, uh, some bicarbonate soda, baking powder, and some uh, salt, I think. Um, mix it together and cook it on the top. And they, because you've got a little bit of that yeastiness, that natural yeast will help them rise. So, yeah. Um, and you the same crunch and the same moist, you know, a lot more juicy than, say, just a piece of toast, maybe. And, you know, not actually quite so crunchy as the crusts on a sourdough yeah that sounds brilliant and um because the thing with crumpets and muffins is sort of it's it's difficult to buy really good ones you have to work hard to buy good ones i think waitress do some really lovely sourdough crumpets but lots of them are just kind of quite plasticky so making your own is just such a cool thing um what was i going to ask you oh other other versions of eggs benedict what about the vegans and the vegetarians what would you do for them totally fine actually there's some really good recipes out there for vegan hollandaise sauces involving um, cashew nuts, or there's another one that I've tried as well. And the secret is using some of those lovely nutritional yeast flakes, because they will give you the flavor, which is nice, that sort of savoriness, which is good. But yeah, lots of good vegan ones. Um, so you would probably just have maybe some nice bread, some avocado, some hollandaise, uh, some vegan hollandaise. So yeah, it's not too, it's not the kind of thing that would be too precluded from uh, brunch is quite good, actually, because you could do something like, if you wanted a vegan type one, you could do like a shakshuka type thing um, and just have chickpeas and peppers and tomatoes all cooked together with some coriander um, and maybe avocado instead of your eggs or something. Um, yeah. other eggs, so there's, um, what else is there? There's uh, eggs florentine that we see, so that's spinach instead of the bacon. That's nice. Uh, there's eggs royale. That's... Uh, yeah, smoked salmon. Yeah, smoked salmon instead of the bacon and that's lovely. So the reason they all work so nicely is you've got the saltiness of your salmon or your bacon to go with your eggs. And eggs don't have any seasoning. They have no sweet, sour, salty or bitter and they're just kind of pure protein really. So they need, they always need seasoning and help of some sort, but they give a beautiful silkiness. So they bring texture and nutrition to your dish. Mm, sounds delicious. Any questions anyone's got, pop them in the comments box. Don't forget, there is um, until the 26th of March, there is 15% off textiles and selected glassware at Arga Cookshop if you want to buy any last minute Mother's Day gifts. Um, and how are your muffins doing there? They're great. Do you know, this is a bit of a revelation. I do love the thing about Arga, the Arga is actually you can just kind of have a go. Um, yeah. Like so many things cook on the top. So if you're new, these are lovely. The first ones I did earlier, actually, I found um, the first side coloured a bit more and I turned them over and the second side, when I cut the second side, it was almost like the inside was then getting properly cooked because they puffed up a bit more. Um, I've just cut one of these first ones in half and they've got a lovely texture to them. Ah. I mean, not quite good value, but these are like really super value. And then as you say, you know exactly what's going in them, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And you don't get that kind of weird plastic taste, which is always a joy. Nay, you have been brilliant as ever. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone who watched. And um, yeah, and check back because we have lots of great lives coming up. Thanks, Nay. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.